This is going to be my first uh, YouTube video. Uh, hoping that this kind of helps people out with their uh, Chrysler uh, auto opening doors. Have seem to have a tendency to have problems with the wiring that goes to the door. And if you look closely as I bring it in, you'll see this little track right here. It's actually a uh, kind of plastic link that keeps the wiring inside. And what it's made to do is actually help roll the wiring back and forth so it doesn't get caught up in the cog here and inside of the gearing that helps open and close the door. Problem is is that after a while of using the door um, and the wires going back and forth um, it actually breaks the wire on the inside of the insulation you won't be able to even see the fact that the wires are broke. The door will just suddenly stop working uh, basically, the other day I ended up getting a notification from somebody saying that my door was open and it was four hours after I left my van. I pressed the button and thought the door had closed all the way, but it stopped almost a foot prior to closing, which meant my vehicle was unlocked for four hours. Um, so hopefully this video will help um, everyone figure out what the problem is with their doors and maybe help uh, some of you guys fix it first step is to take this plastic piece off the top of the cog. There's two screws, one on the top here and one here. Both of them are Phillips, so a number two Phillips should work it. Next thing that needs to be done, uh, there's a little wiring harness right here with a, with a plug on it, and the wiring harness comes across here. And there's a little tiny piece down inside of here that pushes into the door to hold the, the um, hard wiring harness part there. First thing you're going to need to do is there's a little cable here. Just kind of lift it up and push it up and out of the way. That'll kind of make it easier. Then there's a little tab right here. You're going to pull that tab downward. That unlocks the clip. Also unlocks this. So once that's done, there's a little detent push. You push the detent, whoops, sorry. Push the detent and you can wiggle the plug and the plug will unplug. As you see, the plug is out. It's a little push pin right there and that's a little popper that you pop down. It's still attached here so we're going to go ahead and put a screwdriver up under here, a little flat screwdriver, and kind of work it off easily because if you don't work it easy it's going to want to kind of scratch your paint and it's also going to end up breaking the, the little plug piece that's down here. It's very hard to see from this angle. There we go. Right where my finger is there's a little, there's a little circle. It has uh, has no way of getting really under it unless you get underneath the harness. Pin gives you a little bit of trouble and doesn't want to come out. Sometimes you got to actually use a diagonal pliers, which looks like this. Get up underneath it, underneath the harness itself on this side, and you're able to kind of pry up on this. You just got to kind of pry it back and forth until these little teeth end up letting go. Um, be careful not to break this harness though, because that's actually what keeps this in place keeps it underneath the door hinge right here and keeps it, it keeps the wiring up and out of the way um, your wiring should lay down inside here like so but once you take it off you lift it up and out and it frees it. The next step is actually this little hinge pin right here that's actually what holds your your uh, kind of chain wiring harness on there's a little tiny flat piece right across the face here. You can take a, a uh, hook or a pin or something, anything that you really have that you can get down inside of it. When you push it down in, you'll actually feel it pull out a little bit. You're going to kind of just pull a little bit. Once it's there, you should be able to take a pair of regular pliers and kind of yank it out the rest of the way. It should pull completely out. Sometimes it gives you a little trouble. But, as you see, it just pulls out. Once, once you get that out of the way, this actually just pushes downward. Once it pushes out of the way and downward, it pops off the pin, and your harness is free. As you see, the harness is completely free. It's the front part of the harness right here with the plug on it. Harness retainer. It's your wiring harness with loom over it down into your harness chain. Now, one of the things that you need to really look for when you're looking at this closely 
when the door was open, I had already seen where this wire kind of stopped. The wire stopped approximately here, which is about maybe three to four inches from the end of your harness plug where it plugs into the body down here and holds it in place. It's really hard to see because of the weather stripping trip uh, strip here. You can actually take the weather stripping off and make it a little easier to see as I just did. You'll see another bit of like wire loom right here protecting the wire coming out of here going up into the body. Uh, next step is you want to take chain link right here on each side. Easiest way to deal with that would be to take a flat screwdriver and you put it in between here and in between oops sorry in between here pop the little tongue out you see the little tongue right there pop that little tongue do it nice and easy and then another one right here once you pop those two tongues it releases the the chain once it releases the chain it makes it a little easier for you to be able to work. Now, as you see, it's spinning free now. It's loose. And each one of these parts right here are actually lids. It's a retainer that holds the wire in place. You can actually go through and take those lids up so you can take your wire out and inspect your wire. How to take the tabs off of the chain links. Um, these little tabs can be a little bit of a pain in the butt. You want to use a real small pair of needle nose pliers or a, a pair of curved hemostats. Um, they, they both seem to work very well. Um, hemostats sometimes easier, sometimes it's the, it's the actual needle nose that work about, uh, very well. But um, on, the, on the link, I'm going to grab it here and I'm going to show you. This side has a little tab and then this side actually has a hinge. So there's a tab side and a hinge side. The tab side is the side that, of course, we're going to pull up. So if you'll wait one second, let me get both my hands in here. You can see I grab here, support it here, and twist with this one. The tab pops up and the lid pops open. And that's how you end up lifting your lids. you got to do them all one by one, and then you're able to release your wire. Your wire will just come right out. And when you're done, just pop it back together and put it together and you're done. All right, now I popped all these little tabs up. These tabs actually what retain the wire, as I said in the earlier part of the video. Um, each one of those have to be pulled out in order to be able to get the wire out of the harness. Um, if the chain link actually just pops apart, it's no big deal. Just make sure that you keep them in the same direction. So when you put them back together, it's, it's really easy to snap them back together. Um, there's a little kind of round piece on each side. And then on this one, there's also a hole on each side. Those kind of push into each other, and then you're able to kind of snap them back together. They fit right into each other. Uh, now that that's done, this is what your wire looks like. The wire comes out, and it's looking just like this. Individual strands. Kind of a stupid design, but you know, who am I? I'm not a designer. But what you're going to need to do now is you're going to have to feel each wire individually and kind of flex it. When you flex it, as you're inspecting the wire all the way up, you'll feel if there's a problem with the wire. If the wire is broken on the inside of the insulation, you will actually feel it. Um, it doesn't give the same the same flex. It will actually bend in a 90 degree. So that's kind of how you're going to inspect each one of your wires. But another thing you might want to do prior to doing that, if the, if the wires are real nasty, um, you can actually use a little bit of, um, this is just Rust-Oleum wax and tar remover. Just use a cheap rag, spray it on the rag and wipe the wires down. Um, kind of makes things a little bit easier. You're not having to worry with sticky fingers or grease or dirt. Uh, makes things a little nicer for you. Okay, this is actually the power wire. It's black with a red stripe. Um, this one on my other door was actually the problem. Um, it had kind of separated inside of the insulation. You couldn't really tell that the that the wire was broke unless you knew what you're looking for. Um, so like I said a little earlier, that 
you just kind of bend the wire, just kind of feeling up and down it, and you'll actually feel if there's a break in it. If there's a break in it, what you want to try and do is remember where you saw down inside of the track down here. About three inches from the end of here was where my flexation point was. That's where I want to kind of cut into the wire, kind of cut the wire off, and that's where I'm going to begin one of my splices. Um, I didn't find any breaks in this wire. I was just basically doing this to inspect it. Since the other one gave a problem, this I figured this one was probably going to also. But um, sometimes it's a pleasant surprise you don't find an issue with it. But um, basically you're going to just cut it right about here. You're going to splice it, splice in a new piece of wire. You want to make sure the wire is the same size diameter on the inside um, or larger. Same size or larger. Um, the other place that you're going to end up splicing in will be underneath this wire loom right here. Um, you could kind of pull it back and do it on the inside and when you do it on the inside it makes it a little easier. Once your splices are done, um, like I said, when you do the splice you want to try and do one of them inside the wire loom. It's, it's not a flexation point so you don't have to worry about it so much but you want to make sure that it doesn't go too far into that wire loom. When you're done make sure that you kind of put a little piece of tape around here. Now I don't like the fact that all these wires are just kind of flexing around so what I try and do is every so often just put a little piece of tape around it um, don't want to do it too tight because you still want the wire to flex but once that's done you put everything back together uh, it's pretty much finished um, like I said I didn't find any issues with this door so that kind of made this one easy for me and um, I'm gonna go ahead and put it all back together Hopefully this video kind of helped you out a little bit. If you don't know how to splice wires, um, the next time I have to splice a wire, I'll go ahead and do a video specifically on splicing wires. Um, have a good day. Hopefully I help.